Tears of the Kingdom's most exciting surprise was the addition of a whole new underground map, The Depths, complete with a spine-chilling soundtrack, pitch darkness, and danger lurking around every corner. This massive, cavernous world bathed in shadow creates an eerie ambiance, setting the scene for Link's most fearful enemy encounters. Everything you do see looks so alien and strange, and it immediately reminded me of a certain real-life environment the deep ocean. I haven't found any developer interviews that confirm my suspicions about what inspired the depths, but I think it would still be an uncanny resemblance if not a direct inspiration. Regardless of intent, it undoubtedly evokes the same feeling as a deep sea environment. Let me show you what I mean. The lighting in this map layer, especially before you activate the light routes, closely resembles real world footage of the deep sea, such as this mission from the Noah Okeanos Explorer. It's just darkness and emptiness, except for when it isn't. Light comes from the remotely operated vehicle that's filming the video, lighting up only what's directly in front of us. Light also comes from bioluminescent creatures. Aside from these light sources, we're so deep in the ocean that the sunlight never reaches. It's just pure darkness. Similarly, in Tears of the Kingdom, we can eat glow food or don glow armor. We can attach a light to our very own vehicle. And some of the only things we can see in the distance are creatures that glow. As for the vast emptiness of it all, take a look at what's filling the emptiness out in the deep sea. Well, besides water, of course. It's these little white specks known as marine snow. It's an elegant name for what's mostly pieces of decaying dead animals, feces, things like that. Not the kind of snowflakes you want to catch on your tongue. The marine snow lazily drifts around in the water, looking a lot like the specks in the depths of Tears of the Kingdom. Unlike the ashes in the air during the blood moon, which flicker and catch the light, move quickly and disappear, the specks in the air of the depths are almost suspended ended in the air, just kind of floating slowly as if through water. The plants and animals of the depths feel very alien compared to the rest of Hyrule, and I could say the same about what lives in the deep ocean compared to anywhere else on Earth. The very first thing I noticed when exploring the depths that made me want to make this video is all these feathery plants. There's a type of animal in the deep ocean called a feather star, also known as a sea lily or a crinoid. And yes, you heard me right. This is an animal, not a plant. It's a relative of the sea star. Crinoids range widely in size from just a few centimeters to a meter or so, and millions of years ago they could be up to 40 meters tall. So seeing these feathery trees in Tears of the Kingdom isn't far off from what an actual crinoid could be, especially back in ancient times. The past is a clear theme in Tears of the Kingdom, so it makes sense that the design of these new areas could take notes from fossils, something we'll see a bit more of later on. While we're talking about the plant-like things in the game, I wanted to give some attention to the ground cover, the stuff that acts like grass. The color scheme of these white stalks on the ground with red towards the top reminds me a lot of the appearance of marine tube worms, which live around these deep sea underwater geysers called hydrothermal vents. These curly whirly things definitely look like fiddleheads on land, a part of the fern life cycle, but they also evolve the appearance of basket stars and brittle stars of the deep ocean, another starfish relative with creepy coiled arms, some of which do attach themselves to the ground. These things that look sort of like white mushrooms also kind of look like carnivorous sponges, which are a thing. The sponges are covered in these tiny hooks that act like velcro to capture prey, which is just fascinating. The deep fireflies are a really cool looking creature that's unique to the depths in Tears of the Kingdom. I would compare them to an extinct sea creature called Anomalocaris, an animal known only from the fossil record that used to be one of the ocean's top predators. I also think there's similarities to polychaete scale worms, another many-limbed, bug-like ocean animal. The fireflies, pose, and other glowing creatures in the depths mimic the real-world concept of bioluminescence which thrives in the deep ocean. Think anglerfishes using the pitch darkness to their advantage by luring in prey with their light. 
The silver bokoblin horn definitely gives me anglerfish vibes. I also find these floor patterns really interesting. This one reminds me of limestone rock formations that are filled with fossils, mostly of ancient ocean creatures thanks to their easily preserved shells. Similar idea with this ground cover. It reminds me of coquina, which is almost entirely made of big, fossilized seashell fragments. Obviously none of these real world examples I've mentioned in this video are exact matches to the game, and I genuinely think the Tears of the Kingdom creatures and scenery in the depths are meant to be their own unique thing, completely made up for The Legend of Zelda world. But I can't help but notice these similarities in the design, immersing us in a place as cold, dark, and alien as the real deep ocean. So what do you think? Am I onto something with these comparisons or grasping at straws? I myself am not sure, but regardless Regardless of intent, my personal experience as a Tears of the Kingdom player who also happens to love ocean life is the depths makes me feel like I'm diving into the vast, largely unknown depths of the sea, which in itself is a bit scary, so I think it gives off a similar vibe. If you're interested in the real deep sea footage I've been showing, I highly recommend checking out Noah Okeanos Explorer. They do live streams of their deep sea dives and it's really incredible stuff. And if you're interested in how Marine biology inspires video games, check out my Splatoon videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.